Hey everybody, it's Jane Gay, host of the Pursuing Excellence podcast here. Just want to take a minute and say, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many different platforms. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Pursuing Excellence podcast. I'm your host, Jane Gay, and today on the podcast, I have uh, Coach Jonathan Guest, head coach of Eagles Lane Christian Academy. Um, it's been there the last, I believe, what, 14 years? Something like that. <laughs> Something like that. Um, but Coach, before we get into this, um, how's, how's everything going with you? You know, you and the family, how's everything going? Everything is going good. You know, Uriah is eight. That's my little boy. He's eight years old now. So I am uh, full speed into uh, youth baseball. Wow. So having a lot of fun doing that. And uh, Miss D, my wife, she's teaching. She teaches you, I think. Yes, sir. And um, so uh, we're going a thousand miles an hour, you know, just like everybody um, that has children. Um, so it's fun, though. It's it's good. That's good, Coach. Um, so... Tell us a little bit about yourself, Coach, so we can get to know Coach Guess. Oh, uh, get to know Coach Guess. Well, a little bit about me. I grew up loving football. I was number three in our family. We had four children. My oldest brother's Adam, and then Andrew, and then me, uh, and then my sister, Chrissy. So um, being the third, I probably got beat up on a lot, probably got neglected. I don't know how much attention I got from my parents. I have great parents, by the way, but... Um, you know, so but you grow up, you get you get beat up a little bit. You get I think that makes you tough. You know, maybe being number three, Uriah's number one, and I think you you're basically number one, Jay. Yeah. You know, you don't get beat up on, so you're yeah. You know, we got to put you through board drills and things <laughs> yeah. like that to get you beat up on, so you get tough. But yeah. um, so I just remember always loving football, man. I just it's just in me. I loved it. Um, and then you know, so I grew up playing football. Played in high school. I uh, went to the Citadel where I walked on. That's the only reason why I would have gone to the Citadel. Nobody wanted me to play college football. I loved. Co- I wanted to play college football. Nobody re- recruited me. My high school coach somehow got Citadel to offer me a preferred walk-on spot, so I took it. Um, and uh, you know, went to the Citadel. And my claim to fame is I, you know, I ended up starting. Um, three out of uh, my redshirt sophomore year. I think it took three games or four games to, to actually start. And then I held on to the starting position um, for my junior and senior year as well. And I don't think that's a testament to me being any good, just how bad we actually were at the <laughs> Citadel that I could start. Um, you know, and then from then, uh, I think my love for football dissipated a little bit. And... You know, I decided I wanted to go into the Air Force, finish my master's degree, all that kind of stuff, be a financial investment banker. I don't know why I wanted to do that for any other reason than I, than I thought you could get rich being a financial investment banker. So that was my dream and my goal. But uh, when I was in the Air Force station at Warner Robins, um, the Lord really got a hold of me and my life, and he called me into being a high school football coach. So uh, from that point, I got out of the Air Force, started coaching high school football, and here we are today. <laughs> yes, sir. So, Coach, how long have you um, been coaching football? I've been coaching football, I guess, you know, when I was in the Air Force, my second year in, I started helping out at First Presbyterian Day School. I coached uh, junior high football, or middle school football, 7th and 8th grade. Had a lot of fun doing that, helped out coaching that. And then the next year, the coach asked me to uh, coach the varsity offensive line. I was still in the Air Force, but I did that. And then um, I had the opportunity to get out of the Air Force and go work at FPD full time. Um, so I got out of uh, the Air Force and I uh, became a full time teacher coach. I taught five algebra, algebra two classes, and then I taught accounting, mm-hmm. and then I coached football. Uh, so that was a grind. Uh, but it was just the, the things you got to do if you want to coach in high school. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of my background. Okay. Why do you feel God called you into into coaching football? Well, the story is this: me and my wife, we got married. We weren't. 
I, I grew up a Christian, uh, meaning my, I was taught the Lord my whole entire life. Had amazing parents, took me to church. I knew Jesus. I knew the Lord, but I was not following him. D and I met. Um, I guess we were both 22 years old. Maybe, I don't, yeah, probably 22 years old. We both met. Neither one of us were walking with the Lord, but we got married. So a year into our marriage, it was almost over. And I was a selfish, prideful, arrogant person. You might say I'm still that. I try not to be that. I repent of being those things. But, you know, all, all, all of us um, struggle with sin. Yeah. But I was, I was arrogant and prideful. I was all about myself. I wasn't about her um, at all. And, you know, and she can tell you her story. But we were about to be done. And I remember driving to the Air Force, uh, not Air Force, the Air Force base. And I was driving and man the lord just really not spoke to me audibly but all of a sudden i'm getting these convictions you're prideful you're arrogant you're a horrible husband all you care about is yourself all and a lot of other sins the holy spirit was revealing to me about myself so i go home and i just repent i get down on my knees and repent and um i apologize to my wife and from that point forward my life didn't just drastically change you know but my committed my life to the lord i surrendered my life to the lord and he called me into coaching high school football and that's uh ministering to you guys and uh using football as a means to proclaim jesus christ as a means to help uh young boys become men godly men preferably yeah. um but we still can teach them how to function in life and be successful um, I believe through the game of football, and honestly, you know, am I the perfect husband? Am I am I the perfect? I'm probably still prideful and arrogant, and only worry about myself. I worry about winning too much. I worry about <laughs> having a great program too much. Um, but I, but I think the difference is now, um, man. I repent of those sins. I, um, I I I fight against those sins, and God has revealed those things to me. Um, to, to help me be a better husband and, and a better dad and, and a better man for anybody that I coach and, and have influence over. Absolutely, Coach. Um, so tell us, how did you get the job at Elka? How did that happen? Uh, really just luck. Um, one, of, one of the guys, the guy that coached softball down at FPD, his son-in-law was Nick Westbrook. And Nick Westbrook was the head coach at Eagles Landing Christian Academy. Well, Nick was get Nick Nick was done. He quit. He didn't want to coach anymore. He was getting out of coaching. And the guy at FPD told Nick, his son-in-law, about me, Jimmy Turner. And um, and so Nick told Coach Queen about me. Coach Queen called me. They interviewed me, and they gave me the job. I tell people all the time, and it's true. There's a reason I got the job. Number one, Elka didn't want to pay anybody anything. Um, and so they didn't have a lot of money to pay anybody. I was young, so they could get me. The other reason is, is they needed an AP biology teacher, and D taught AP biology. So I was an easy hire. Don't have to pay him anything because he's never proven to do anything. And we can get his wife because we need an AP biology teacher. So that's why I got the job. Interesting, Coach. That's uh, great. So, you know, every school I feel like, Coach, has um – has a standard or a mantra as you know what they hold everybody to what would you feel like that is for Elka what what's the what's the um, standard here well the thing that I always said when I came in uh, is demand excellence now as coaches we say a, a lot of different things they, each year it's something else just basically upon the team that you need like last year we kept saying um, uh, uh, have nots right you know yeah uh, but it's just the team that we had that year. Not a lot of people with offers, not a lot of special players with stars and all that kind of stuff. We were just a bunch of have-nots, which is what I am. I'm a have-not. Um, I don't have anything. don't have any special talents. I just got to work hard. Um, but we've always said demand excellence. And when I first came here, you know, I learned as a coach, you know, you can ask for excellence, but you're not going to get it. You got to demand it. You got to demand things be done right. You got to demand kids work out. And you know, and another thing, we don't say it, but you got to inspect it. You got to watch it. Oh, I tell you to do five reps. I got to watch you do five reps. So demand excellence has always been uh, the dominant theme of this program. And, and for me, excellence, what is excellence? 
Uh, it's a moving target in our world. But for me, it's Christ. It's his principles, his rules, his laws, his statutes. It's his word. He is truth. He is, he is always, he's never changing. The culture will change. The, the standards in our culture will change. But Jesus Christ never changes. The Bible and the gospel never changes. He is excellence. So when you talk about integrity, when you talk about truth, when you talk about discipline, you go back to God's word. It's excellence. Um, so that's the highest standard of performance and and not just your outward performance but your inward performance so i believe uh demand excellence is what we believe in and talk about all year long now football wise we say faster football fanatical effort attack you know all those things um but when it comes down to it the daily day-to-day grind demand excellence absolutely coach and you know like i tell people you know i first came to elka what a freshman year and just I feel like I felt myself changing, you know, not just physically, but mentally and how I approach everything. Because before, you know, I was a lazy kid. I didn't really want to do much, you know. Then I transferred to Elka, and then, you know, it's just the, the standard. And I felt myself just every day trying to exceed that. Um, and I, you know, it's been awesome being a part of this program the last four years. And it's um it's been amazing, uh, you know. So, but coach, um, tell me, what do you look for in a coach or player that um uh, that wished I to play or coach at Elka? What do you mean, like what well, do I? What what kind of what what? What's the outcome? Like, what do I want to see them become? Yeah. Yeah, because like I don't any kid that comes to me to play football for me, there's not a lot of expectations in what he is in the moment. It's about what we can make him. It's right. like I think my job is to help a young man become the absolute best version of himself that God has created. Yeah. Now, you got to understand this. Uh, because of sin and because of sin entering to the world, we're born sinners. We're born into sin. We're not the best version of ourselves. In fact, in fact, we're the worst version of ourselves. You know, we're prideful, we're arrogant, we're liars, we're cheaters, we lust. We All those things are just natural for us uh, because we're sinners. And so how can I help a young man become what God has created him to become? So the hard part for me is, is I can teach him God's principles. I can teach him what God wants for him. I can even have the vision for him. But the Holy Spirit has got to come inside of that young man's heart for him to actually take hold of becoming everything that he possibly could become. I think from a football coaching standpoint, from a physical perspective, I can make them as good or make you guys as good as you possibly can be from a physical perspective. Like I can work on your body, I can teach you this and I can train you, all this kind of stuff. I can make you work. I can do that. But what's going to take a man... Um, over the top and to the to the top level uh, in becoming who his best version of himself that God created him to be is for him to surrender his life to Christ and yeah. it's like Galatians two twenty is my favorite it's my favorite verse from a football perspective I've been crucified with Christ and it's no longer I who live but it's Christ who lives in me if it's just me if it's just Jonathan Guest living. I'm going to screw up and I'm going to fail and I'm not going to be the best version of myself. That does not mean I'm not going to win football games. That does not mean I'm not going to be successful. But it does mean I won't be a good husband. It does mean I won't be a very good father because I'm going to neglect them to pursue me. I'm not going to be a good uh, man for Jaden Gay because I'm going to neglect his soul as I try to pursue my glory. Um, and so I think that what people... I think the difference between us at Elka and a lot of other schools is I don't I, I don't claim to do anything better than any other coach out there. Everybody works out. Everybody coaches in X's and O's. I think we do a really good job of pouring into the soul of a young man and um, identifying and trying to root out just evil behavior. Like yeah. the Lord hates pride. Well, we all struggle with pride. The Lord hates my pride. 
and he convicts me of it. I can so I hate another man's pride. So the boys I coach, I convict them of it. So that that's the end game for me. At at the end of the day, I want young men, I want you that so when you're four I'm forty one, Jaden. When you're forty (laughs) one, I want you not to have made the same mistakes that I've made. I want you to be a better dad and a better husband than me. That is my dream and my aim. From a football perspective, I want everybody to be better than me right than what I was that's success now it's really success when I can look out there and I can see guys like Fred Odom and he's 28 years old just had a baby and I think he's a better husband than I ever was at 28 years old that's success um and and that's a really cool thing yeah coach so um 2020 obviously you know didn't end the way uh we wanted to at Oka uh but if you could sum up the year uh, the season uh, for us. What, what would you, how would you do that? Uh, I think it was a great year. You know, at the end of the day, we talked about we we're a bunch of have nots. Um, I think if there wasn't any other team out there besides Prince Avenue, we probably could have won the state championship again um, because uh, Prince Avenue was just a special team. Um, I think when you look at our record versus single A teams, we we were undefeated minus Prince Avenue. Yeah. Um, and then we lost three games. We lost it to Blessed Trinity, who was a five A powerhouse. We lost to Chris County, who lost to Pierce Pierce County in in the uh, semifinals of the AAA playoffs. And we lost to Pierce County by six, who who are, are seven, who won the AAA state championship. So it, it was a good year. Uh, yeah, does it hurt? I, do I think we played our best game the last game? No, I don't. I thought we played our worst game, which is disappointing, yeah. um, our last game. and, and But uh, that happens in life. Sometimes in life, um, you know, you just suck. <laughs> and that's, a, you know, my wife tells me not to say that word, but there's, there's really no other word to describe how we played that night. Now, have we played our best? Did we beat Prince Avenue? I can't say that. They were really, really good. Yeah. But we sure. played our worst game that we played all year. And that's very disappointing and that's hard to swallow. So if I flush that out, I think we had a very successful season um, and a very good season and something to be proud of. And, um, you know, we failed there at the end and we stunk there at the end and we fell flat on our face and but you pick yourself up and you move forward and that's going to happen a lot of times in our lives you know we're going to fall on our face you got to pick yourself up and you got to move forward absolutely coach so going into the 2021 season pop you know you guys i was looking you have a really <laughs> tough schedule again so how how what's the um what's the plans heading into 2021 my plans are always this two things i say win the day all the time we're going to come to work and win the day and then the second thing is work your tail off and see what happens. I have no idea what's going to happen in 2021. All I know is is that we're going to work our tails off every single day to be the very best that we possibly can be. And if I take care of today, tomorrow will take care of itself. So, man, I don't get wrapped up in can we win state? Can we do this? Are we going to be good? Are we not going to be good? None of that matters. It's just kind of like idle chatter, you know? It's just waste of time. People like to do it, yeah. but really all that matters is can we bust our tail today and can and can we w- and become the best versions of ourselves today? You know, right now I'm just trying to keep everybody out of trouble. Everybody's acting like idiots. So, um, yeah, I don't worry about next football season. I'm trying to make sure that we're well behaved and doing the things that we're supposed to do and working hard every single day. Yep, coach. Uh, that's that's good. Um, and good luck to you guys next year. I know you. I know we're gonna do well. Um, and I want to thank you for joining me on the podcast today, coach. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. And, um, hearing things from your perspective uh so i'm gonna flip the script on Jaden for anybody that's listening out there Jaden, what do you think <laughs> is your best moment like you think about your past years at uh, at eagles and in christian academy at elka and you think just think football perspective um it doesn't have to be a football moment but what is your most memorable thing or your biggest takeaway from your four years um, at Elka and playing Elka football? My biggest takeaway? Um, that Well, I'll probably have to say just, I don't know. I, just being able to come 
you know, be a part of a brotherhood, um, you know, because you look around, I mean, different schools, you know, it's your team, you know, everything, but it's Elka for some reason is felt different, you know, because we're now we're not just a team, we're a family, um, you know, we always there for each other, um, you know, we have each other's backs on the field, off the field, and just being able to be a part of that for the last four years, you know, and a coaching staff that was just pouring into us, like you said, the word of God and helping us be better men. Um, that's, I would say, is the biggest takeaway. Yeah. I, I think, and for the listener out there, I think the biggest thing that I that God has really shown me this year um, is it's really about proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like, we, we really are sinful people, and we really are in desperate need of a Savior. We're enslaved to our sin. We, we've sinned against an almighty God, the creator of all things. We've sinned against Him. We've rebelled against Him. We've told Him that we love Him to His face, but yet we go out into the world and we deny Him. We deserve hell. We deserve God's wrath. And the Lord is looking from above and He sees that we are a wreck. And He sees we're headed for destruction and He comes and dies willingly Uh, Jesus Christ comes and dies willingly on the cross for our sins so that we can be free from sin here on this earth and we can have eternal life for eternity. And I think that's the critical thing for us to understand, Jaden, is that we walk around thinking, I don't have this, I don't have this, I don't have this, and, and we want, we want, we want. We have been given the most precious gift that anybody could possibly want. We have been given heaven by the blood of Jesus Christ. We have been forgiven of our sins by the blood of Jesus Christ. What more can I ask for? Because we're all headed for death, right? We're all headed for hell. But, 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 Jesus Christ is coming down on the cross for our sins. What more can we ask for? What more can I possibly want? Why do I wake up every single day wanting something from this world when I have everything that I possibly could want, which is salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ? So anyways, Jaden, I'm going to end on that right there because I need, me personally, I need to have that perspective every single day so I do not get wrapped up in chasing the futile things, futile things of this world. Yeah, that, that was <laughs> that was really good, Coach. Um, good way of looking at things. Um, so, guys, this has been the uh, Pursuing Excellence podcast. I'm your host, Jane Gay, here with Coach Jonathan Guest, Eagles Lane Christian Academy. Thanks for uh, being on here with us, Coach. Um, we appreciate your time, and um, you have a good day, Coach. Take care. Um, signing off, guys. I will see you guys next week on the Pursuing Excellence podcast.